Malati o kani bamba, Africa, 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 Africa. Ni Nigeria o kani bamba, Africa, Africa. Tis a very rare honor, Africa, Africa, Africa. We honor our Lord God Jesus Christ. I thank God for your life and my life. I personally give glory to God, the creator of heaven and earth, by his power, by his spirit, by his everything. He has been our shield for the past one year. And I can say that by the grace of God, we have been on here once away for the past one year. We started February 2017. And by the grace of God, this is our 52nd episode. Just thank God for me. I just give honor to him. It's not by our power or might. It is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I give honor, I thank you all, our listeners, both live and otherwise, anytime that listen to these messages, let us thank God for his grace over us. This is the hour of hope that we have been bringing to you for the past one year. And today is the first anniversary. We thank God for that. God is able to do everything when you put things before him. He is able. Even when you are weak, He makes you strong. When there is nothing, He makes provision for us. I give honor to Him, despite all odds. Even though there was a month I was unable to come on Mondays, but by the grace of God, we are able to do it in the afternoon. But we are able to produce 52 episodes. And you can go to our YouTube, just put in Abraham there. Abraham Ayoade. YouTube, all our past 52 episodes are there. I give honor to God and I thank you all who have been listening to us for the past one year. Thank God. Please continue to pray for us so that we will continue to come live by the grace of God. And it's my obligation to God that as long as I'm alive, as long as I can speak, as long as you give me the strength and the spirit, you give me the earth and the spirit, I will be on here by the grace of God. Not by my power, but by his power. Glory be to God. Before we, today's episode, let us just go into a short prayer. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, only my care. Father, Lord God, we give honor to you. We thank you for everything you have been doing in our lives. That in the past one year, we're able to come on here live to your children. It's not by our power or might. I give honor to you. You are God. You have promised us that you will continue to strengthen us. And I, I tap from your strength. I tap from your authority. 
Father, never leave me alone. Continue to strengthen me. Continue to envelop me. Let me continue to decrease while you increase. Let your spirit increase in me all the time. And I thank you for the life of all our listeners. As the, our viewers, as they listen and look at your word. Father, I pray that they shall be blessed in Jesus' name. I pray that their lives will be transformed. And more importantly, both them and myself, we will not die before we see you. We will see you before death, O oh Lord. Thank you for everything. May your name be glorified. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, in the next one year, I pray that you extend our coast, extend my territory, O oh Lord God. Let your arm be upon me so that I can broadcast this, your words, more than this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. To God be the glory for the past one year. Every week we have been on here. And I give honor and glory to God. Thank you all for listening, for uh, look, uh, for being these episodes for the past 52 years. Like I said, uh, sorry, 52 weeks. Like I said, if you go to YouTube, Abraham Ayuade is there. All our episodes. Thank you. Today's theme, ministration, is called Divine Direction. Divine Direction. You see, before you do anything, before you do anything, you want direction. Let's say you are going even from home to your place of work, from home to your office, from home to your shop or store, from home to your school, I am sure that you will want God something to direct you to there. If you are going to visit a new place you have not been before, you want to know how you are going to get there. You will plan your route. Even when you are going, if you don't know your route, you may, maybe you want someone by your side who can guide you to lead you to where you are going so that you don't miss the way. So every day, you need guidance. You need direction so that you go as according to your plan, so that all your plan for the day is fruitful that you are able to achieve all your plan. So you need directions. So also, my brother and my sisters, before you move out, you go out, you start anything, do not go, do not start without God. You need direction before your journey can start. If you don't know where you are going, and in some countries where they have satellite nav navigator, which they call sat nav, you where you are going, you will put it there. Oh, this is where I'm going. You want that sat nav to navigate you to where you go. You are going to direct you exactly to the point you are going, so that you don't miss the way, so that you go according to that sat nav. That even may disappoint you. When you even use SatNav to navigate to where you are going, you may get disappointment. But when you put God first, that I am going today, I am going out today, I need your directions. I need you from this point to that point. When you put God first, you are rest assured that you will not miss your way. Let me start from the book of Psalms of David. David, in Psalm 5, before he did anything, what did he do? I will read from just verses 2 and 3. David said, My voice shall thou hear in the morning. Let me start from verse 2. Sorry. He said, Akin unto the voice of my cry, my king and my God, for unto thee will I pray. He said, 
Hearken unto my voice in my cry, my King, my God, for unto thee will I cry. Verse 3 now says, My voice shall thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and look up. Brothers and sisters, do you go out any time, any day? Do you call God before you go out? You need spiritual directions. You need God to lead you in your ways so that you don't miss where you are going. Even in verse 8, it, makes, it, it says that he was waiting for God's direction. David did not just go out. He said, my voice shall die here in the morning. That means first thing. What he does is God's direction. God's lead. God's guidance before he did anything. So what I'm asking you, my brothers and sisters listening or hearing me at this present moment is that before you go out, put God first. Let him direct you. Let him lead you. When God leads, you will never miss the way. When he leads, when he directs, when he guides, you will never means that way. It is very, very important. Before you do anything, anytime, you need God to direct you. You need God to lead you because there is no that if you don't want to miss the way. David called God first. In the morning, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will direct my cry, my prayer unto you, and I will look up. Don't look at anybody. Sat nav that you rely upon or someone sitting by your side that you rely upon may disappoint you, my brothers and my sisters. It is God that will lead you to the right place. What are the things that you are doing that you think you can do with your knowledge without God's direction? Look at it. You as a person, let me say you want to get married. Do you, did you put God first in your marriage? Or when even you put God first, did you listen to his direction? Did he tell you to do what you do? Or you want to do yes, I can do it. Once I do it, God will back me. No. If you do it, if you refuse to listen to the voice of God, you will be disappointed at the end of the day. You must understand, my brothers and my sisters, that you need God first to direct you. Are you at work and there are options for you? Oh, you, there's a, there are two or three jobs for you. You are so blessed that you don't know which of these two jobs you want to take. What do you need? As a child of God, ask God to direct you. Not all that guitars are gold. You may find out that the one that pays you for more may not be the one God wants you to, do, to, to take. But if you Put God first to direct your way because He knows before you do. He knows the end from the beginning. You have options. You know, oh, if I take this job, they will give me a house, a car, housemates, I will, I will have no, many cars, I will, this is the position they are going to give me and they are going to pay me a million pounds or million dollars or euro in a year or billion naira in a year and there's another one that says oh you are going to be the manager we provide you with a car but 
you will only be paid certain amounts that is not uh, uh, that much. You think that is not attractive enough? Did you ask God, which of these are more attractive? Sorry, which of these is more attractive? You just choose. You didn't ask God to direct you. You didn't ask God to lead you. You didn't ask God to guide you. You just pick one. And after one year, you find that not all the data are gold. You find that it, it was it's just glossy. The one they gave you, you want to take because of the remuneration. It's glossy. It won't last for long. Unless it's not good, God may say it's, that's the one you take. But if God says so, I have no qualm about that. But you need God to guide you. Or oh, are you a, a, a student who has many courses to do? This course is there. Oh, okay. It's a lawyer. Uh, a, mechan a mechanical engineer, an accountant, uh, or a business, or are going to business. You, you think because your friend is a lawyer, you think you can, should do the same thing? Or you think because your friend is an accountant, or because of the dignity in the profession, that is the one you are going to, you are going to go, through, go for? No, my brothers and sisters, ask God before you lay your hands on anything. Put it before God. What should I do? Do you know that David will never go to war without asking God, should I go or not? And if God said go, he will go. Because like I said here, in the morning, he cried unto God. My brothers and my sisters, before you step out, before you do anything, call God First, he is the author and finisher of your faith. He is the only one that can do it. He is the only one that can do it. My sister, I understand you always share. Don't worry. If you can't share, God will bless you. I pray in the name of Jesus, whoever blocked it, because they envy you, because you have been broadcasting, God will continue to be with you. Don't worry. But anyone that can share this message, please share it. Let many people share it. God will bless you. Listen, you need God's direction in all your ways. If you rely on someone to direct you, you go to, uh, what do they call it? You go to uh, professionals, advisors, career, career professionals who will let you know. Yes, they will advise you. But as a Christian, as a child of God, you need spiritual guidance. For your, Don't say your son should go and do a, be a lawyer, go and study law. When the boy does not or the girl does not want to do, do law. Let him or her choose or take him or her to God. God, can you lead my son? Can you lead my daughter to, to her destination so that she will not, he or she will not choose wrongly? It is only when you call God first. I'm not saying God cannot direct you without even say, oh, do this, do this, because God can speak through you. I'm not saying that. But many times, we tend to use our brain. We tend to do things with our knowledge. We forget God. We forget to call God before we start something. Before you start that, you start that business. Did you ask God about that before you start that business? Did you put it before the Lord and just get to the middle way and that business collapse? I know. Even, I'm not saying if God directs you, if he says, go, my son, there will not be a problem there. We are coming to that. The road is not always smooth. I agree and I accept. And it's spiritual. 
And don't think that someone is behind it. No, nobody is behind it. Nothing happens to you, my brothers and my sisters, without the knowledge of God. Before anything happens to you, he knows about it. Before Satan went to tent, Job, God knew everything about it. So it wasn't surprising. So if God even directs you and you think, ah, this thing is not, it's not smooth, don't leave it. If God directs you and you believe that God directs you, my brothers and my sisters, do not leave it. Do not leave it. If it is God that says so and you believe at the beginning that God says so, you need God's direction in all your ways. In everything you do, God should be your guidance. God should be your navigator. Don't allow anybody. I'm not saying don't seek advice. Please, I'm not saying don't seek advice. Seek advice. But the end of it, before you start, any advice you seek, anybody that advises you, put it to God. God. This is what I want to do. I am your son. I want spiritual guidance. I want spiritual lead. I want you to lead me in this, my project. You want to build a house because your friend is building a house when you haven't got that much? Unless God leads you. Don't do things. You need to do things one after the other. Don't look at anybody. Don't say because A is, is uh, traveling here and there. I, I must travel as well. No. God has a purpose for you where you are. God has a purpose. You will never regret. Whatever you do in the name of God, you will never regret. How many people that you think should be better than you are not as better as you are. There are many, 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 many people who are not as better that you think they are better than you, but are not as better as you are. God, first, in everything you do, you need God to lead you to wherever you go Anytime you want to do anything, you need God. Come with me to the book of the same book of Psalm, chapter 37, verse 3, uh, verse 23. Psalm 37, verse 23. The Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by, by the Lord. And it delighted in his way. And he that delighted in his way. The steps of a good man or woman is directed by God and those who delight in him. A good man, a child of God, it is only God that directs their steps. Everyone that believe in God, that delight in God, that Lord orders their steps. Unless, and unless you put God first, you trust in Him, you put your hope in Him, He will direct you. If you call Him to lead you, He will never, 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 never disappoint you because He's a God who never disappoints. He keeps feet a good man. Hmm? Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9. He says, He 
is is not only that time, but he's talking to us that God, whom we worship, that God, whom we trust, will continue to clean our feet. He will continue to keep our feet so that we will not go astray. He will lead our feet to where we are going so that when you go out, he will lead you, he will support you, he will guide you. You will not go left when you are supposed to go right. You will not go right when you are supposed to go left. That is what he is telling us. So he orders the steps of good men and women. And of course, everyone that delights in him. The book of Psalm 42. What does it say? I know you say I'm using a lot of Psalm today. Well, that's God's doing. Uh, Psalm 40, verse 2. Now, he said, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. He established my goings. He set my feet upon the rock. It's only when God directs you that he will set your feet so that you will not go astray. If you step your feet on the on, on, on the mud, you will get hurt. But when it's on the rock, who is that rock? Christ is the rock. Christ is the rock. He set you on Himself because because you have already called Him to direct you, to lead you in all you are doing. So obviously. You will not go astray. You will not lose your way because He is your guide. He is your support. He is everything to you. Why do you seek someone else? Eh? It's, it's Psalm 119, verse 1 says. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. You who walk in the law of the Lord. You, when he tells you to do something, when he directs you, you listen to his direction. You listen to his guidance. You listen to his lead. When you let God be the number one in your life, you put him as the front burner before you do anything. You need to pray. Even I tell you, you need to do what? To pray to God Almighty. Eh? You need to do things in the name of the Lord. He shall guide you. He shall lead you. He will never forsake you. Put God First, put God first because He is the one who you need to believe. Because He directs, don't allow anybody to, 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 do, to tell you to do things when God does not say. But when God directs you and someone says no, please forget that and listen to the voice of God. God can speak to you. God can lead you. Put him as your number one. He is the first one to be in your life. And that is why uh, 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 Solomon says in his book, uh, Proverbs chapter, chapter 3, verse 6. 3 6. He said, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. He will lead you when you pay obeisance to him. 
when you put your life to him, when you put him first, when you trust in him, you put all your trust in him, he will direct you. He will lead you. That is what he says. He will do what? He will direct your path. When he meets your path, path, he will lead you to where you are going. You will not miss the way. You will not miss the road when you put your trust in God. I pray in the name of Jesus that as you commit your life to our Lord Jesus Christ, as you say, God, you are my number one in my life, you will never be disappointed in Jesus' name. Anything you do in the name of Jesus shall be successful in the, because you put your trust in him. Are you planning? Even you want to go from one city to another, you need, to, you need God's guidance that as you are going on your way, the Lord should see you through any accident. You should not be in, in, involved. If there is accident in front, you will not be there. If it's behind you, it will not come near you. Anybody that is deranged, that you cause problem for you on your journey, will not come near you. This is when you call God, when you call him. I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, God is able to lead you. God is able to direct you, to give you the true direction. No one can direct you spiritually. You can have any, any divine direction without God. If you are righteous in your ways, he will direct you. That is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 5. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way, but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. A righteous person, God will always direct them. I thank you all who are watching tonight. I pray that direct, the Lord will direct you in all your ways. You will not miss the way. He will continue to order your steps. He will answer your prayer all the time when you call upon him in the name of Jesus. Anything bothering you that you place before the Almighty Father, I pronounce and I direct, as he says we should decree, I decree into your life that the goodness of God will continue to follow you. Whatever you ask God, he will grant them to you in Jesus' name. You will never cry in Jesus. If there's problem, if you are thinking of something in full, that is coming ahead of you, and you think this thing is impossible to be done, or you think that it is, it is just too heavy for you, that Lord will lighten it for you in the name of Jesus. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy lady. Seek me. He will, I will give you rest. The Lord will give you rest. He will remove the body by the anointing. He will remove the body from your head. And he will remove the yoke from your shoulder in the name of Jesus. Anything you are going through, you will see them no more in Jesus' name. Direct him. Look, if you listen to this song, song going background, he said, God, lead us anywhere we go. I pray that Lord will lead you to where your joy is. If there's anybody that says that joy you want is not coming to you, I pray in the name of Jesus, that joy you will get them in Jesus' name. I pray that whoever says that joy will not come to your life, will be disappointed in his presence, in a, in, in a presence. You will give honor and glory to God. You will thank God. You will call people to rejoice with you. And God, God of joy, will be your everlasting joy in Jesus' name. Nothing good will elude you in Jesus' name. You will always be on top and not be below. The great God, the Almighty Father, will never forsake you. God's direction is all you need in all your ways. 
The same Proverbs 11, verse 8 says, The righteous is delivered out of their trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. You see, the Lord will deliver you from that your trouble. It's the same thing if you look at Psalm 34, 19. I believe so. Uh, Psalm 34, 19. That, that any problem you have, he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Because you have already put God first. Psalm 34, 19. Because you have already put God first, He will direct you. He will lead you. Come to me again to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 11. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 11. See, God is good. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse, it, it is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall do what? We shall be alive. We shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet abideth in faith, he cannot deny us in anything. He will never deny us. So I think I read a wrong passage. Ah, okay, it's a uh, Second Timothy three eleven. You will see the persecution of 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 uh, Paul. He was telling us out of them all, he said persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, uh, Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all, the Lord deliver me. So He is able to deliver you. When you put him first, God first. If you put God first, you will not be disappointed at all. Psalm 27, 11 also says, Teach me thy ways, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of my enemies. Lead me. You want God to lead you. You need God to lead you. And when you ask him to lead you, he will lead you to the right destination. He will lead you to the right way. You will take the right path and not the, the, the wrong path. When God leads you. Don't allow anybody to lead you, my brothers and my sisters. Don't ask direction. I mean spiritual direction. You, If you need spiritual direction, Pray to God. Or if if you are in your church, there are prophets and prophets, and you know there are genuine prophets and prophetesses. Because we have a lot of them that are deceitful, that are deceiving people. Go to them. Ask for God's direction. God can use them. If you know you are not capable enough or you are not strength enough spiritually, ask God's guidance. Go to prophets and prophetesses that are good, that are genuine, that are spiritual. That are not doing it for their own sake, for their pocket. Uh, so, our believers, God, we must put God first. We must put God first. Don't allow anybody to deceive you. But you need God in your life. Before you make any decision, that we affect your life, we affect the life of your children, your husband, your wife, your anybody or your family. God first. God first. Go to Him by prayer. Go to Him by prayer. God must be the first person in your decision. 
before you marry, like I said, please, if you're a single person and you haven't married yet, don't say because A had a divorce, B had a divorce, does not mean marriage is not good. There's no perfect marriage. But put God first. And if you put God first, listen to everything God says. Don't go out of what God says. When you go out of what God, what God says, you will, you will regret it. May you not regret. The Lord will continue to be with you. He will continue to lead you. Before you change your job, ask God. They may offer you a better post where you, 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 they, they are asking you to go. But if you go without consulting God, you need God to direct you. If you now go to somewhere, uh, to another job, when the one you already have is secure, but because that post there is higher and the pay is higher, it, it may be glossy. Put God first. Let God direct you. Not all the greeters are gold. God is able to do more abundantly than what you think. Before you do it, let God make that decision for you. For you. Even in your place of work, they are trying to downsize. Should I go? Should I not go? They gave you the option. And the money they gave you to go is very, very attractive. And just take the money and you go. And after three months, you spend the money. You get to... to, the, the, to there's nothing for you and your family to look up, up to. Why not, before you take that money, why not ask God, should I take this money? Will it be good for me? Or should I remain in the same job? Because they say, our bread is better than none. What you have in your hand is worth to have in the bush. A bed in the, is worth to have in the bush. Or how do they say it? Pardon me. Let God lead you. Let God guide you. Don't make decisions without consulting God. You may at times want to take a leap of faith that whatever decision you take, you make, God heareth, God's hands and needs. You need the wisdom of God in everything you do. Remember, remember Solomon, before he started to lead the Israelites, when God asked him, he asked for God's guidance, give him wisdom. And without wisdom, we, we all know now the, the way he gave a judgment regarding two women with two children, one dead, one alive. The one whose child was dead changed a son from the other. The other one was asleep. But because he has God's wisdom, God's direction, he was able to judge and he was able to give the right child to the right woman. So you need God's guidance. Look at Nehemiah. If you look at Nehemiah, he's a good leader. Nehemiah was a, a what would I call it, a cup cup bearer in the palace. In, in an exile. But when he heard about Jerusalem, how desolate it was. It was on that day, if you go to Nehemiah chapter 1, there's no time for me to read everything. On that day, he went to the king to, to, to give him something to drink as usual. And the king saw his countenance. Because before, he's very jovial, he's very active when he presents things to the king. But that day, he was not happy and the king was able to, to know. And the king asked him, what do you want? He did not tell the king that everything that day. He went to consult God for God's direction. What am I going to tell the king? How are you going to lead me? And he went to the king and he told the king after he has consulted God, he has prayed to God Almighty for God to guide, to guide him, to lead him. And it is now history. How he led the Israelites. Even though God gave him the go-ahead, Tobiah and Sambala, they were torn in his flesh, but 
God was able to handle them. So, my brothers and my sisters, you need God first. In everything you do, let God guide you. Before you start a business, let God guide you. Before you start your education, let God guide you. Before you start a mar marital life, let God guide you. Before you, you even travel, let God guide you. When God guides you, I'm not saying the, 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 the road will be smooth. Look, go, let's go to the book of uh, Genesis about Abraham. He took the leap, leap of faith when God told him to leave his, his people. He did in faith. Yes? God called him. And even if you look at chapter 12, uh, chapter 12 of uh, Genesis, after God has called him, he said, And now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. God's direction. Before that, he was with God. God has tested him, has known him that he is an obedient child. He is an obedient boy of his. And God said, I will bless, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thee thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall the families of the earth shall be blessed. That was fulfilled. We will see that later. I know the time is going. But Abraham put God first. Now, when he now came to a time when is uh, his nephew, Lot's, Lot's elf men and Abraham's last men were quarreling. It is now time for them to, to separate because Abraham thought they cannot be together because of that. But God has a way of doing what he did. So what happened? Abraham told Lot, Please go your way. I go my way. He, he asked him, this is, this is east. This is west. Which way do you want? Where do you want to go? Let us just separate ourselves. Lord, look at both sides. Ah, This one is greener. This one is too, uh, is too is desert. It's derelict. There is no water there. Okay, I will go this way. Okay, Abraham did not argue. Normally, by tradition, the elder is supposed to choose first. But Ab look, look at that. Look at that. Abraham was supposed to choose first. He asked his nephew to choose first. Okay, take the one you want. He took the one that was better. But if you go to verse 10 of Genesis chapter 13, verse 10, and Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, and they thou comest out Zohar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. And they separated themselves, the, uh, the, the one from the other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the city of Plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the lost exceedingly. Look at that. Now, verse 40 says, And the Lord said unto Abraham, after the Lord was separate, Separated from him. Now look at God's direction. God's divine direction. He now said, Lift up now thy eyes and look from the plain where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and thy seed forever. And I will. Will make thee, sorry, I will make thy seed 
as the dust of the heart, so that if a man can number the dust of the heart, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise. Look, arise. Walk through the land of the, in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abraham removed the tent, his tent, and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. You can see when, when he allowed God to direct him, the Lord directed Abraham. He directed him and he listened to him and he, he was not covetous. Covetousness. No. The, the, the spirit of covetousness was with Lord. He took the one that he, th he thought was better. But Abraham listened to God. God directed him. He led him. So in anything you do for, your, for yourself, for your family, put God first. What I say? Put God first. Let God take preeminence. Let God be the first in your life. Don't allow, don't allow anybody to direct you. Let God listen to the voice of God. And he shall, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day. That's Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 1. If, so you need to hearken to the voice of God. When you listen and hearken to the voice of God, you will not miss the way. He is able to do more abundantly than you think. He is able to do more than you think. Just, my brother and my sister, I'm asking you in the name of God that in all things you are doing, let God be the first. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. Let him direct you. You need his direction. You need his direction in everything. You, you cannot do it on your own. Abraham listened when God told him, look here and there. Look west. Look east. Look north. Look south. I will give it to you. You shall be a blessing. And no one will be able to count that blessing of yours. So, what is the problem, my brothers and sisters? You have been doing certain things without consulting God. Things have not been going the way you think it should, be, should go. God is in control. God is in control. It's not too late. You know, God told Abraham that he will bless him and he will be a blessing to others. Don't you know, or have you forgotten, that our Lord Jesus Christ, we are talking about today, is a root of when he came as a man, Jesus as a man. Yes? I'm talking about the humanity of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not talking to him as God now. I'm talking about the humanity. And God from, from Abraham, Jesus Christ came from that. He came from that. So if Christ came through that, he, he said he was going to... You see, I tell you, I don't want to be polit a political. If the whole world is against Israel today, they will lose. I'm telling you, because that covenant, that covenant which God made with Abraham, when a covenant is made, it will never be broken. A covenant must not be broken. If someone breaks a covenant, you know, Abraham did not have a covenant with God. It was God who had a covenant with Abraham. You understand? You can correct me, please. Abraham did not go into covenant with God. It was God who gave a, a, a covenant. This is what I will do. Abraham did not tell God this is what I will do. But God said to Abraham, Look, this is what I will do. So, 
if God makes a covenant with you, he will never break it. So if the whole world, it is the direction of God, directive of God, the lead, God is leading. And what we are seeing happening in the world today is not by accident. It's not by accident. If the whole world go against Israel as they are there, like sorry to say, I don't know if you don't have if you don't understand Yoruba. They said, La Regon, ni mari wotin shalotin shogo, pan from still rejoice among the thorns. You, you know where Abraham um, sorry, Israel is situated now. Look at his surroundings. They are of different religion, but they cannot do nothing to them. So look at that. I'm telling you, when you believe in God, you are among enemies. The people that you don't have power over, I pronounce as God is protected is the Israelite of those days, and is protect protecting the current Israel. The Lord will protect you. The Jerusalem of those days. Is making a new covenant in Jerusalem today. That lost covenant in your life will never be changed in Jesus' name. When God made covenant with Abraham, Abraham did go up and down. There was a time he, 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 he wanted to help God to accomplish his mission. God did not, because of that, change his covenant. That's why I said Abraham did not make any covenant with God. Because if he had made covenant with God, eh, he would have, eh, because of that, he wanted to do something eh, which God did not say he should do, God would have destroyed him. But no, God kept his bargain with Abraham and he's still keeping it. He sent our Lord Jesus Christ to you and me as our Savior. Do you put him first? Do you have Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Do you ask for his direction? Does he direct you? It's not late. Even if you have started a business, you did not call God first. If you have started a project, you did not call God first. If you have started, even if you are a, a, Look, I know of a person who was about to get married. Their marriage is about four uh, a week, and God said they should not go into that marriage. The person said, ah, "This is nonsense. Uh, I have a week. What has God been doing all these days?" Went to that marriage. The marriage only lasted for some years, and broke. Whereas, if that person, that man, had already listened to that voice. God would have provided another one. Maybe look at what people will say. The shame of that. Because they have invited a lot of people. But when God speaks, when God speaks, do not say it is not God speaking. Be in spirit all the time. Let him direct you. Let him take control of your life. When he takes control of your life, you will not regret it. Call God first. Believe in Christ. Accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And because you allow him as your Lord and Savior, you will never regret. My Lord, my God, will continue to bless you. We continue to uphold you. I once again, I bless God. I thank God that one year in today, I, I give glory to God every Monday. By the grace of God, I will come here again to give testimony. And I know God will bless you as you listen to this word all the time. The glory of God will continue to show in your life. Thank you very much. This is the end of today's episode. This is the 52nd episode of this ministration. Hour of Hope by Christ Hope Ministry. Thank you very much for listening. I thank every one of you worldwide, Africa, Europe, America, United Kingdom, where you are watching. God bless you. I cannot mention your name. You are just too many.
to mention. I can see you all and above all, Christ sees you and knows you and he reward you. You will not do it in vain. In Jesus' name.